Hey everyone, and welcome to the Infinite Respawn Podcast. I'm Chicken. I'm Oak Tree. I'm Griff. I'm Bucket. What's up, guys? Uh, Is anybody else not entirely ready for that? I was like, <laughs> oh wait, he's doing it. Okay. Yeah, try to try to get it out of the way quickly. Chicken's <laughs> watching a football game that's very important to him, so if he seems a bit distracted, he's very upset right now. Um, but he's here though, and that's the important part. Yes, I am he here. Still loves us. Yes, kinda. Well, some of us. Kind of. Uh, <laughs> right now, I love nobody. <laughs> except for Griff. We'll, we'll have that exception, but right now... Well, kind of. You know, kind of, yeah. Let's, let's still put the kind of on there, just in case. We'll uh, make it accurate. Too funny. Gonna, I just, just realized just that my here mic within was the realm all of... the way down. Oh, that's not good. Yep, just now realized that. That's okay, I well, fixed it. Sorry! Um... Or as Oak would like to say, sorry, Mr. Man. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Man. I'm sorry. I had it turned up, uh, and then I pushed the record button, and it, like, shifted the uh, volume. I'm sorry, everybody. I'm not worry. Still my favorite line. Come on. <laughs> is Anytime she is. says she's sorry, it's all I can think of in my head. Sorry, sorry. Mr. Man. <laughs> <laughs> that was i don't even like it's sad to think it makes me feel so old to think about how long ago red dead was red dead redemption 2 like how old is that game now and i played it like right after it came out it was not the same time it came out but it was, I think it was like, a year after was it? it it might have been but you, it's still and like, then you played it for like ago. then you played it for like nine months or something <laughs> I'm, i'd still be playing that game you know if i had the free time but i will play it again have a million other games that I'm trying to play. Like I've, I just started since I, since last time I finished Saints Row, um, I went back to Dragon's Dogma. I still haven't finished Boulder's Gate Three because they haven't fixed my, my stuff. Um, Mine they did started fix working chicken, again though. now. Mine yeah. started working again now. Uh, except there is a quest. Oh yeah. That I I, I I spent about yeah I know right. This is perfect. <laughs> Perfect fucking segue. But there's a quest line in in uh, Boulder's Gate that you have to uh, not entirely spoilerish. It's it has to do with the firework thing, the firework building, and it's un it's an unfinished bugged quest chain. Like there's almost no way that I, I've tried. I spent like an hour and a half, almost two hours, trying to do this. Sorry, I gotta mute that, or I'm gonna have little dings in my head. Ding, ding. Anyway, uh, but I spent like almost two hours trying to do this shit. You have to like, what of two things happen? Which it did happen to me quite a few times. Um, I took out or I dealt with the situation, but it didn't count for uh, quest updating. Oh, wonderful! So I was like, oh shit, that's not cool. So I restarted and did it again. It did count as quest updating, but I was all I it put me in combat with like half the fucking city. So I was like, okay, <laughs> that's not cool. Let's try this again. So I moved some things around, did a couple different things, finished it again. No quest updating. Did it again. In combat, quest updated. Did it again. In combat, quest uh, quest updated. Stuck in combat with all the guards. Oh my fucking god! How am I supposed to do this? I do it the right way, but it doesn't doesn't count as quest completion. So I gotta go back, try to make it so that it happens in a specific way. But if I don't, if I do do it that way, I end up in combat with everybody. Like, I mean, I even went like a roundabout way to like, it's an area you're not supposed to be in. So I went in kitty form and went up there and started placing barrels. Just to fucking Barrel make Mancy. it work, Yay. and and tried to make it work that way, and it still wouldn't fucking update properly, unless I ended up in combat with the city guard. Like I was just losing my shit. I was like, "Fuck this! I'm not even like looking it up too." Nobody has a, a proper way to finish the quest either. Like wow. I've seen people be like, "You can blow up the entire fucking building. You can throw bombs from across the street. You can try to kill everybody manually, but then you end up in a fight with the entire car." It's like you just you're just almost screwed. There's no proper way to finish the quest. Huh? Wow. So I'm like, you know what? Fuck this. I'm leaving. So I left I'm, after I'm two hours. I guess they decided to abandon it because they hid the the start for it. And then forgot to take the start out. 
Um, they could have offered different ways to handle it. I'm or sure something. they could have. Like, maybe maybe because it'll be addressed you hit, later on. I, I went a uh, a diplomatic. I always try to do the talking my way through, and you can talk your way all the way up to that wall, and then there's no way to get through it via uh, talking. Like there's no diplomatic uh charisma mm. persuasion way to get through it you basically hit this wall and there's nothing you can do that's why i had to do the kitty form to like bypass the wall but you can't do anything else from that point can you read their mind uh yeah you can but it doesn't really do anything like hey an option yeah it doesn't really add anything i was like what do they want me to do nothing because they just forgot about this one since it's at the end of the game <laughs> oops that one got away from us you guys will uh that be patch <sighs> seven <laughs> yeah, oh shit. Oh, yeah, so I got. We're at what, patch four, hotfix 11 now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, patch four, hotfix 11. Yep. Uh... Yeah, so start, uh, I played that again. I got frustrated right away. But I, I moved on from it, so I'm not going to finish that one. I guess it'll have to be stuck in my quest log as unfinished. Yeah, that's <sighs> happened to me a couple of times where it's like, I just, I can't figure it out or I'm not going to do that right now. So, you know, just leave it. Leave well, it it's not be. that I can't figure it out. It's like everybody else says the same well, thing I did. It's like there's no way to do it, right? Yeah, but there's some quotes where I'm like, I'm not, I can't figure it out and I'm not putting the effort into it right now. So uh, it got left for, I'll ooh. figure it out at a later point. <laughs> um, but I did finish Saints Row. I mentioned that. Um, Tech and asked for me to make a list of things that I liked about the game, and that list is, is short. But I will tell you the same thing. I told I told Oak uh, the other day about it. One of my favorite things in the game is that it lets you customize your cars because they tried to lean into Saints Row 2 slash GTA. Um, so it's a lot based on the, the cars and stuff. And you can customize a lot of stuff about it and all the sounds that it makes. If it'll make sounds, I've heard on PS5, it's still not... The cars don't make sounds. They're like Teslas, but worse. Um, but Which is sad because one of the settings that, or customization options is for you to customize what your engine sounds like. But I picked the car horn um, that is not a musical tone, and it is not, you know, a normal car sound. It's just some guy yelling, me, me, as you drive by. <laughs> I, I'm, I mean, lean into the Well, then he the says fun, move, right? too, right? Doesn't he say move? Yeah, he's, it's like, it's like 15 to 20 voice lines that are, that it cycles through as this guy just yelling your horn sounds instead of it being an actual car horn. It's really funny. I would love that for my real car horn sound. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> You could probably get one like that, I'm sure. I'm, I'm sure with the electric vehicle. Like, I think eventually what's going to happen, everybody moves to electric vehicles, that the pipe sound is going to end up being a thing because we're so used to having that type of thing. But there'll, there'll be a decibel level difference because, like, big cities will say, okay, it can't be louder than this, so then they'll have to change. you got to put the limiter what, on there. Yeah, limit, limit what's on there, but then you'll be able to change it to whatever you want to. And then... You know, eventually make it to where uh, the horn is too. You know, yeah, you get to pick what you want. Yeah. Yeah, and that that's louder than the decibel level, so you can actually honk at somebody. <laughs> uh, and then you get a bunch of advocate groups that'll be like, "No, if it's not standardized, people won't know it's a car horn." Why you guys got to write on our fun? Just let me have this. Let, let the I mean, just have one that goes. Just have one that goes. Hey, <laughs> like that? Because move out really the way. Do. Hey, move. Hey, move out the way. <laughs> <laughs> or, 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 perfect, perfect. Get off the phone. Get off the phone. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for as many people that stop at red lights and then just stay there after it turns green, you need one that's like... Or one that yells something about moving to the other lane. I always yes. wanted one of the... Uh, it used to be popular in the, the late 90s, early 2000s in, in the area that we live in to where uh, some of the guys from high school would have the speaker system like the uh like a megaphone inside their car itself and they could like kind of kind of think like cop cars have oh my yeah God. and they'd have it built into it and they would like make sounds with those and talk through them oh my i kind of want one of those when i get up to a stop <laughs> stop light and nobody and somebody's not going forward to be now fair in have electric to get out of cars, your car to initiate road rage incidents right? to mm -hmm. be fair they will probably have like a little button on your steering wheel that gives you a bunch of different options you know the regular or the get off your phone or the hey move idiot or i'm swapping lanes what do you here mean on your steering wheel by then we'll have driverless cars so it'll just be on your control panel there they'll, they'll can... still put steering wheels in you know just in case in case you need manual override. As long as driverless cars are still crashing into other stuff, this is going to be a while. By, well, by the time that we get <laughs> I mean, this to level, be fair, humans we'll have been crashing into each other for a millennia. 
Like we still do it. I mean, we were walking into each other before we were driving into each other. The problem is people are abusing the uh, the the uh, hands free options yeah. and and falling asleep at the wheel and doing a bunch of other stuff so they can't be there to press the brake. Mm-hmm. It fails. Well, not that this was meant to take a, a veer into the real world stuff, but you know, saying so far fun. A checklist of thing that I liked there. Um, yeah. <laughs> my my <laughs> horn said beep beep. That's my favorite part of this game. Uh, Ooh. yeah. I mean, it was definitely probably in the, in the top <laughs> five or ten things. Um, it was definitely up there because that list was kind of short. But you know, it is what it is. Well, now now that you've played it, what would you change? Oh no, that's a long list <laughs> and a, probably its own podcast. Would you, okay, short list, three items have to be fixed. Like uh, have to be fixed. Needs more fun items. Um the the lack of silly was it is one of those things where like they tried to lean into some of the comedy, but then they'd like dial it back to where, you know, it's like, no 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 no, that's too silly. This is really a serious thing that's happening here. And it's like, but but it's Saints Row. Please give me, like, my alien abduction gun or a dubstep gun or something fun. The funnest thing you gave me is not fun to play with. It is a... It launches, like, firecrackers, essentially. (laughs) Thanks. Can I have something else? There was a a DLC, like, squid launcher for Saints Row 3. Um, Give me something like that. (laughs) Dubstep gun gun will always be my favorite. I know. I love that gun. I love it so much. The plunger gun, too. Oh. Okay. Oh, that was good. Um, three things, just three things that I would change. Well, that uh, needs to take itself less seriously at some points and maybe more seriously at others. I know that that's weird, but it's some of it was like, why are you, why are you building your criminal empire? Well, because we're broke and we have uh, college loans to pay, and it's like, I see that you're trying to make this a satire piece about the real world and our financial educational situation but then we totally forget about that there's no mention of ever paying loans or rent or anything we just go and live our lives after that you know it's like i i'm unsure of what's happening here and also more development between your friends don't make me friends with people right out of the gate and then surprise me with things about their past like i'm supposed to attach to them based on that i should already know no, that if we're besties third one, the third one's the, the... yes those are, that's all th- those are the three shortest things I can give you. Because like I said, I mean, like I mentioned that you start out as best friends and that's it. I will say, and I think I told Chicken this, I told one of you this, one of the things that drove me insane is by the end of the game, so we've done all of this stuff together and built our criminal empire and we're apparently besties and whatnot, somebody has abducted my friend group, my three friends, and I'm going to save them and an alarm starts... And one of my friends says to the bad guy, Is that our roommate? They're coming to get us. I just got relegated back down to roommate? Not even bestie. Roommate. Seriously? (laughs) This is the end of the game. What do you mean, is that our roommate? Aren't we more than that by now? No, no. No, clearly not. Like I, I just that's the thing is like there's like no that's like no character development, no relationship well, development. That's any nothing. character development okay. that you tried to have, you just threw it all out the window because you relegated me back to our roommate because you didn't want to assign a gender and you did not give the player which is fine, like I don't mind that, you did not give the player character a nickname that everybody calls them. It wasn't player, it wasn't boss, it wasn't anything like that. Our roommate. I'm like, oh, Okay, I thought we were friends, but I probably would have been okay if they had said based on this. If they'd said Rumi, because I feel like Rumi is more of a pet name for the roommates that are like friends versus roommate. Yeah, you know what I mean. I mean, I I would have preferred them say our friend or something. You know, they should have established a a thing that the ga- main character gets called, and 100%. it's like they couldn't figure out what they wanted that to be, so they just didn't. It's like, hey, it's like me. I don't use people's names. I just, you know, use uh, different types of yeah, pronouns. Yeah, but if you were talking and... about Baka, you wouldn't be like that be guy like that on guy. the internet, you know? You'd, you'd be like, my friend, one of my best friends, 
the so, Wookiee. You know, I, like you've I, I got would, plenty uh, of things that you could call him that are not a generic term you would have used when you first met him. Yeah. When I could use a generic term. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> and we know who we're talking about. Exactly. So it's fine. It's, it's exactly. like his nickname. You know. Yeah, yeah. yeah plenty of uh, generic terms for everybody. <laughs> well, I'm just saying. I don't I don't call any of you generic name number four. So Yeah, it's kinda weird. Yeah. 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 That's kind of I don't understand the, the lack I guess they couldn't figure out creatively what to decide what to call the the person. Yeah. Like whether you had the player or the boss before like it'd be what I mean, what would you say? I mean like, that's that's the problem is they didn't really establish what your identity was. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess that, but, that I mean, speaks that... to a larger narrative issue that they came across where it's like, yeah, I mean, you're you're kind of in charge of this, but they also assert that the four friends are almost equal partners, even though sometimes it doesn't seem like the other ones do much of anything. You're doing almost all of the work, but you still mm -hmm. don't get any sort of like leadership title or anything. So. I mean, I guess they could have called you their bitch, you know? <laughs> You're doing all the work for him. Is that my bitch breaking in? I mean, I almost would have preferred that, to be honest, now that I said it out loud. Kind of, yeah. I kind of would have preferred that. It would have leaned into the Saints Row feel a little more. Right. Um, but... <laughs> I will say it was also a little weird. GTA 5 is, you're in Los Santos, right? Mm -hmm. This place is called Santos. So... It's weird to me to hear it because my brain automatically, I know chickens, bad things happening in chickens game. I saw that look, but it's weird to me because you'd hear them talking about it. And I'm like, what, what game am I playing again? Is this GTA? No, no, no. This is Saints Row. Where are we at? Okay. Okay. That's weird. I don't know why they decided, like, I get you're leaning into the Saints Row feel. I don't think you should have named your city something quite that close to their city. Agreed. That's just me, though. Anyway. I mean, I, it's weird. It was. It was. They, so, so, yeah. so now here's the question. Now that the, the studio has been absorbed into uh, Gearbox, right? And they absorbed it. Volition um, got shut down, didn't it? Yeah, but it got absorbed. All the, the people ended up going oh, into okay. Gearbox, I think. Um, if Gearbox then makes a version of Saints Row... Are you going to be interested at all, or is it going to be one of those where you're going to go? See, that's hard because yeah, I know almost, you're a big Saints Row fan. I I am, and almost anything that Randy Pitchford touches at this point is a hard no for me. So right. that's like a real I'd have to wait and see kind of situation because I would like to support the people that made a, a game that I absolutely adore. I would not like to do anything that supports Randy Pitchford. So. That's why I still haven't, like, I've seen Borderlands 3 on sale for, like, under 10 bucks. Still haven't bought it. Because I just don't want to, you know, I don't want to give that dude anything. It's it, too bad Too bad that, uh, you know, you, you don't have the Epic Game Store. You could just get it for free probably every single month. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> Uh, then you're not giving anybody money. Not Epic, not them. <laughs> Doesn't really matter at that point. Nobody makes money here. We're all poor. We don't life. understand how we're losing so much money. <laughs> Gee, it's a real head scratcher. Let's give away I more no games idea. so we can make more money. Let's also continue to buy exclusivity for games that aren't selling anyway. Do it. <laughs> Do it. That sounds like a Do great it. money making plan. Uh... <laughs> what have you been uh, doing? Uh, me, yeah. I've got. Um, I've been playing uh, more Super Mario um, Wonder, uh, which I'm really enjoying. Um, I like the the badges, which help you do different things. Um, the uh, I just picked up one that's like a super jump. It's a crouch super jump, which is kind of neat because you can you can run and do like the little run crouch slide that Mario can do, mm -hmm. and uh, and then you it builds up. Uh, power as it does it so you can like burst through things and stuff like that so that's kind of fun um but uh the it's funny too because dr booth was watching me play earlier today 
on some of the stuff and she was like this is nuts and i was like yeah like it is crazy what they've done with the game but it's like it's fun like it's just it feels like mario but they've done such a good job of when you pick up one of those seeds and go through the hallucination uh drug trip th drug, that it is yeah. yeah it's like insane like just some of the stuff that they created one of them was everything goes to where uh your silhouettes basically it's everything's kind of silhouetted and mario's even silhouetted but he's like instead of, let's say that normally when he's the normal size mario let's say he's like six foot tall he's actually completely stretched out and is like 12 feet tall but is like abdomen <laughs> really that's, large. Um, that's terrifying thank you yeah and so you can't see it you just see the silhouette of him and you're trying to figure it out but when when you crouch he crouches down to the normal crouch size so he's like little bitty and then whoop, like a big spring and mm. when you crouch certain things will show up on the screen that aren't normally there so you have to kind of walk over to them crouched and then zoom up and grab them real quick um that part it, it took me a while to get past that part because you have to get past it to get into uh um to get to another area that i was at but the uh it was it's it's fun like they've done a really good job of making each one of the levels different making you you can there's replayability because of the fact that you have options there to um with the badges um uh, because there might be areas you can't get to unless you have a certain badge um but you might be used to using a um a different one mm -hmm. the uh but i am i've beat three of the bosses i think i've got three more left i want to say so it's kind of cool how they've set that up too so when you go through when you beat the boss um that's what's going to unlock the another uh area but it in the the plot line it tells you why it's doing how it's unlocking that area the area you can't get to um instead of just being like okay now you get to unlock this area instead it's you know something certain thing going on in the the world that that allows that to happen so and reason you can't okay. get there otherwise i feel uh, like which is like from what you've told me about this stuff and this i'm just asking this well stating this to see if it's how, actually how i think since i have not seen the gameplay it feels like they're leaning into like how can we do more platformy stuff and make the puzzles you know continue to make puzzles feel like different new puzzles because it's mario I feel like they've kind of looked at some of the indie stuff, like Super Liminal and other like games where um, your positioning is key to you seeing or using items. Is that is that the case? It feels like because you mentioned you have to crouch to see things, and then you can jump and get them. So you yeah. So some of them, some of parts of it are that are, are that way. Yeah, I, I, I'm I take it up more because they've always had kind of like hidden items in Mario. If you mm -hmm. think of the original uh, Super Mario Brothers had to where you would have like the hidden um, one ups um, and um, the secret and, tunnels and things like that. Yeah. Like in the and first so, games, uh, you couldn't even tell. Like on the second map is warp portals to the end of the game. Yep. You never know that they were there. But yeah. You know. Yeah. Once you've played the game enough, you can actually beat the game in really, really quick because there's two sets of warp tunnels. I think it's four levels total. You could. You, uh, or it's five you levels? go yeah you go to one when you go to because you know they're one 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 two one three one, one yeah four, you go to one uh, you beat one 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 yep. two and then you can teleport to five four if i'm not mistaken is it four then yeah, you can teleport two, three, from, four and then in four two you, you can, can then work to, to eight to eight yeah and you can basically just skip to the end of the game almost immediately if you know the tricks and see that's like with super mario brothers three you had the magic flute and you had a way of getting the magic flute normally in the game with the the shops. Mm -hmm. And then you had another way of, there's a hidden, um, I can't remember which level it's at, but you basically got near a bush, crouched, and we did, you went behind the scene, and that took you back to, to an area to, to find the other hmm. one. And you could do the same thing. You could zoom all the way to the end of the game. I don't yeah, have a just, lot of experience with Mario, so I have they're, to ask They're just questions. doing it differently now because even their 2D style games are made in a 3D engine so that yeah. they can do different styled angles and whatnot. Uh, yeah, so. it's that 2.5 style. The mm -hmm. um, it, And what they did, you know, I like that they're doing that because if our brains are now different too as gamers, because mm -hmm. um, if you think about you know when 8-bit games they were first of all they weren't capable of doing that but because games are more capable we're used to searching for stuff that maybe normally wouldn't be there 
Um, but they've even they've even played on it with some of the the levels, which are pretty cool. Um, the uh, they've got levels to where you have to figure out how to get to the quote unquote treasure, and there's hidden blocks everywhere. So you're just bouncing around trying to find these hidden blocks and jumping all over. You can't really die on those levels, which is great. That's nice. Um, so you just, but it's just fun to try to figure out because you're like, where is this at? Because it's just set up like a puzzle. Where where is this hidden block at? Um, or what am I? What do I need to hit? And and the world will change a little bit. Like they've got the one of the ones I was in um, uh, last week was it's got rain clouds. It's like and so it's like they would pour down rain. When they pour down rain, you can swim through the rain, but they're oh. not always there. So like it's pouring down rain like a waterfall, and then you can swim through it. Well, there's stuff that you can only reach if you're inside that inside that water. Neat. Um, that is. Um, yeah, so they've also, they've man, really that's some rain. yeah right. <laughs> they really thought outside the box for some of the stuff, um, and and then the the online um, element is really cool too. Just because, um, not just because of the fact that if I turn into a ghost, I can hit hit one of the people and and go back to live uh, um, to life, but also because there are parts where you're going to go. How are they getting there? Because you can see their little outline. And you're like, there's something I'm missing. How and so I it kind of helps you with a hint to be able to, to move through. And then being able to to help other people play the game, too, is kind of cool. You get to drop your little cardboard cutout character. And, and that works as for them to, if they die, um, they can they can touch that as a ghost and, and uh, come back to life, too. And speaking of Mario games, Super Mario RPG, the remake just came out this week. It, was it, it is an actual, I was going to ask you, it is a remake of the original, it, correct? Yes, it's a remake or remake. Okay. It's a new engine. Yes, that's, that, that's, okay. that's what he was playing. Because it was, uh, that one's a remake and then Paper Mario got yeah, the it's sequel, right? Yeah, it's definitely a remake because they added in a, a bit of things. It's not a one-to-one. -one. It's like... An, a really good evolution of From what that game was back then. <laughs> like, this is one of the few games that uh, Bowser is actually your ally. Like, you get him as a party member. Him and Peach mm -hmm. uh, are party members. Um, and, like, there's equipment and items and a turn-based combat system. It's the, the predecessor to Paper Mario. Mm -hmm. um, it, yeah, Paper Mario was when Square pulled out of doing the RPGs for, mm -hmm. uh, for Nintendo. Because it's Mario it's RPG, actually a, Legend of the Seven Stars or something like that. Yeah, because it because it was original. Basically, it was a Final Fantasy game that with Mario characters. Yeah, pretty much. It it's exactly like that. And then Paper Mario came out because they evolved that style into Paper Mario, which was, in my opinion, one of the best RPGs. Uh, kid RPGs for sure. If you get your you get your complicated shit that's got so many mechanics that you can't even keep track of. I mean, it, it, goddamn Final Fantasy 16 or whatever it is has a pause menu that helps you it helps explain everything and everybody. Uh, but yeah, that one that one's really good for like a kid RPG. I mean, I even enjoy it because there's a lot of depth. That's what makes a good game. It's simple enough for kids to understand, but there's a lot of depth for adults to to dive into. I think that's what makes a good game in general, right? Yes, like it's just, it, it's a hundred percent where anybody should be able to pick up, which that's Nintendo, right? Yes, Nintendo, yeah, Nintendo wants it to where anybody can pick it up and play. And, and um, I mean, I would say most of their products are that way. I can't think of one mm -hmm. off the top of my head that somebody, just an average person <laughs> couldn't just pick up and, and at least be halfway decent at. So it makes them good. Low, low skill floor, but high skill ceiling. Like you've got mm -hmm. so much room in between the kind of play and learn and search and all sorts of stuff. Yep. Well. So been doing that and then Valheim. I've been playing Valheim as well. And uh I have to tell the story of I told Griff earlier in the week. Um so we had gone to an area of the Mistlands because we're trying to find a particular kind of the the mines that you have to yeah, find. Which we did we did we did find one, by nice. the way. Um but did you get what you needed. Uh we got some of what we needed because they don't have enough inside them. Lucky. I've heard people talking about go finding them after hours and then having nothing in them. And yeah, then having oh to God. go for Yeah, like yeah, we got about rough. half of what we needed. Um okay. the um so it was Old man and I were wandering through 
an area. No pants had left for the night. And uh, so we're just trying to explore and expand the map a little bit because there's a lot of it that we haven't been able to see in the area, especially since it's the Mistlands and it's hard to see anyway. Um, but we wanted to be able to have a starting point too. So we found a plains area and I was like, okay, we might be able to use this as kind of a starting point to go out. And old man ends up dying in the area that we were in. Well, we're far away from everything. And I was like, okay, this is not good. So I happen to go up this hill and I go, go up the hill. And as I go up a hill, I look and there's a tower that's like half destroyed. And I was like, well, maybe this is it. But then uh, three seekers come out, which for those who haven't played the game, they look like big giant flying ants. They came out and I'm battling three of them. One of which is a level one, which is the like one star. They're purple in color. So I'm trying to, I killed one, another one I had halfway down and another one I had almost completely dead. And the one that was almost completely dead ends up killing me. So here's my body lying there in the middle. And I'm like, far away from everything and we're like okay we're gonna have to figure out how to get to our bodies because we came in a different way right we came by land but we're like we're gonna take our ships and we're gonna move them into the area and see if we can go around this land so we try to go around the land we're mapping the outside of the the land as we get in there all of a sudden our screens turn completely orange the water looks like it's boiling and pops up on our screens you're now in the ashlands i'm like turn around turn around <laughs> Oh, reverse, God. Reverse. So we start turning around. So on our maps, there's a little bitty square that's orange from where the Ashlands are at. Um, so we as end up. As long as you don't explore anymore, it'll update when, yeah, when the update goes out. Yeah. So we like pulled out of that area and went back up. And I was like, okay. So there's no way around this area. Like there's no way to get around without hitting the Ashlands. And I was like, okay, we're gonna figure it out. We'll wait until later. It's like okay. So I knew that had to happen later on the next night. So during the daytime, uh, it was my day off. So I was like, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make us some food. So because we, we needed a bunch of food anyway, we brought back uh, mushrooms. We've got like a mushroom farm and a bunch of other stuff in the Miss Lands. So I brought back all that stuff. I was like, I want to make a bunch of food. So we've got it to take with us for this journey that we've got to take. I immediately, when I, as soon as I start up, the first thing I see is you've stirred the cauldron, which in the game means bats are showing up. I am naked, had not eaten any food, uh, was inside our house, and we have a bunch of wolves and stuff outside. And I was like, okay, maybe they'll take care of some of what's oh. going on. So I go in, eat the food, go downstairs, take a healer real quick in order to be able to boost it up real fast. Well, I always have my old gear sitting on one of the little armor stands. So I picked all that up, put it on, ran outside. The bats had killed every chicken we owned that was, and it was inside of a coop. But what it was is we had a window that was there, no shutters on it. And they flew in and there were like six of them inside, it killed every chicken that we had. There were feathers everywhere. It was a complete oh, massacre. Oh. We lost eight wolves. Oh, damn. Um, <laughs> And so, wolf meat, the wolf meat. Yeah. So, well, the, I went around and picked up all the wolf meat, picked up all the chicken meat, took the chicken, threw it out in the middle of the wolves, and go make more, please. I need more babies. <laughs> and then, uh, luckily, we had a ton of eggs, so I went in, grabbed some eggs, and and Started got some chicken going. But over. I was so mad though because I was See, like, no. Such a good idea. And the first thing yeah, I did as as was shutters build them. shutters. Yep. Yeah, as long as you got shutters on <laughs> them. Ain't built no shutters problem. and we were good to go and then i made a bunch of food but i was so mad so <sighs> mad at that because it was like the stupid cauldron and uh last night last night night before um i uh i was like you know i want to change out our wall because the wolves keep killing our wooden wall so i want to go to um i want to end up going to stone wall mm-hmm. well I had three raids while I'm working on this stone wall. Now we could all play together. No problem for three hours at a time. Not a damn thing. I'm by myself and I have three raids. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, supposed, there's supposed to be a, a, a 40 minute check interval. Yeah. It's like they're 45 minutes. And it's like, and, and even then it's like a 25% chance or something. It's a low percentage yeah, chance. Shitty luck. Yeah, I know. Right. Or really good luck, depending on what you're going to look at it. Yeah. 
but I was like, oh my god. So yeah, that's what I've been playing though. You uh, you were like, hey, look at this thing of Valheim, and you were showing it to me, and I was like, man, I do not miss this game right now. <laughs> like, it, it has not been long enough for me to be like, oh man, no, right now I'm still like, I am glad I'm not doing that. <laughs> uh, always, yep. Always is hard when a game becomes a chore, and especially one that you like so much like that. Oh man. Yep. Baka chicken, what are you guys doing? Uh, panicking. Trust me, I, I, I'm gonna have a heart attack before this game is over. Are you anyway, winning yet? Uh, it's twenty one twenty six. It, it literally took us one minute, sixty seconds to score. And never again. Oh no no no! We got it again. There's two minutes left in the game, and we have to score here to win. Okay. Yeah. This this is what this is Lions football, where you just you know, I would love to see a heart rate monitor of this kind of shit for fans. <laughs> like you want to do an independent study, just put put that shit on a, a Lions fan and let them watch the game. Oh man. <laughs> Oh, anyway, I've been playing uh, a lot of Rumble, pretty passively, um, which is That's... Blizzard's is uh, mobile game yeah. that they have out. Yeah. It's simple. It's easy. Uh, I mean, it's not really anything special. I've just oh. been, you know, it's not. It's a super basic, grindy mobile game. It's not special. I've um, just been dedicating my life to it. No big deal. But <laughs> far from dedicating my life to it. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> after this game, That's all I've been be... playing. All of my gaming time has been on this phone, but it's not special. <laughs> well, to be well, fair, to be fair, we are everybody is on their phone all the time these days. Well, and yeah. Chicken plays it passively while he's watching Nugget as well, so mm -hmm. it's an easy one for him to like play something whilst actually still paying attention to the child. So don't you people have phones? Uh, yeah, so, we do. Uh, but, you know, my mind won't run it. Yeah. yeah. Baka needs an upgrade. So don't you people have fair, phones? Yes, but what kind? To be fair, I had to upgrade my phone when Pokemon Go came out because my phone wouldn't run it. So, uh, I mean, my, mine will run Pokemon Go and and Marvel Snap. So, yeah. Well, welcome to the future. The future is now, and your phone <laughs> is not. Oh, uh, I don't care. oh wow. <laughs> Savage. I mean, it's a mobile game. I don't blame you for not caring. It's nothing. Like I said, it's nothing special. Uh. But other than that, I tried Boulder's Gate. Uh, Which the patch seems while. to have fixed a little for you, so that's nice. Ugh, I, uh, it's okay for now. But but yeah, that's all I've played. What about you, Baga? I, I did Boulder's Gate. Uh, I, I finished the, the quest line for uh, Asterion <gasps> with the, the, the Count dude. What did you do? No, why would no. you talk spoilers? No, no. Don't, don't tell me about it. Tell me about oh it my later. God. I want to know how that went because I know you're playing a, a dirge run. With that smirk. No, no, well, this, this is my dirge run. This is my, my normal character. Oh, okay, With that okay. smirk, I'm not entirely sure what he would have done in that scenario. Well, I'll find out whether or not we can still be friends after the show. <laughs> yeah. Um, and and I, I have been playing a, a lot of Half Sword. Yeah, I saw you load that up earlier and I was like, oh, he's back at it. Yeah, that is such a... With the wonky legs. It, it's just so it, it's entertaining just to like go, go in and, and like pick up like a, a candlestick or something and and seeing how far I can get. Can you throw things, man? I never even tried to like throw it. If you could let go, I, things, I just, to, like whip it at people. No, I I don't. I don't think there, there there's a way to throw things at least in, intentionally. So melee only, basically. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, if you can get two people when you're swinging, you. Yeah, if someone like hits your hand or something, or, or you hit theirs, like the the item will will they'll drop it, or sometimes like with the the Sweet. weird in physics, it'll just go flying. And I, I've had that happen, and it hits someone right in the face and knocked them down. Yeah, <laughs> that was the best. Um, but yeah, like I, I've actually beaten through the 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 game, and afterwards it just keeps going, looping and, around. Well, it, it goes like everyone who comes at you is fully armored. And it's like, okay, now, now survive as long as you can. Because try, trying to kill someone in, in like full plate armor is a bitch. I bet. I bet. No, I mean, to be fair, you're going to have to like get like a candlestick and beat the shit out of their leg until they fall over. <laughs> and then like um, beat them in the helmet until it falls off. Well, I mean, I, I haven't made it that far with the, the candlestick runs. Like the the when I beat it, I was <laughs> picking up runs. like uh, swords and whatnot, and 
using the, the, the sword to, like, get in, in between the slits in the armor and try to, to kill him. You're like, Pope, 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 is this doing anything to you, Pope? Oh. Uh, that game is, but, is dumb fun. I would is, not play it. It's free. Yeah, I mean, it's just like a, a almost like a tech demo. You, you can just, like, fuck around with it for, for a bit and then... <laughs> It is a tech demo. It's one hundred percent a tech demo, and that kind of yeah. game is gonna be fun when they actually like make it a BR style where everyone is just like running at each other, <sighs> flailing. You can like see the other people like swinging wildly, and you're like, "Shit!" I'm just yeah, well, not even like don't run into them. You could do it that way and do mass battle as well. So Ooh. like you have like like Braveheart that shit. You know what <laughs> I mean? Like step on one side, one on the other. But then the question it's like, is, Yo, do they run it across the field? Do you turn on friendly fire though? Because you're standing next to your, you know, onslaught of friends here. Two modes. There's two modes: friendly fire mode, non-friendly fire mode. Then you uh, have the BR single player, and then you have, you know. Uh, <laughs> and <laughs> well, I mean, they, they've got the the RNG for equipment. I mean, as you go through the game, you you, you get access. Like in, in the beginning, it's like. Well, you, you can pick up the, this kitchen knife, or you, you can pick up a, a bill hook, or like a a, a little axe for uh, firewood or whatever. And then as you beat the the bosses, um, like the the first boss has a, a big scythe, you you can you know pick that up and go Run and then you'll that. find like a, a spear and, and short swords and uh, better quality axes and things like that as you go through. And you, you'll also get armor. If you could pick that up and then find a reliable way to spin yourself around, you'd be like a lawnmower. The scythe? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it's great because you, you can actually, like, uh, cut people in half and stuff. But when, when you go up against people with armor, it's like, oh, uh, I'm just, like, clinging off you. It's uh, not doing shit. That, that demo is so weird. And whatever they use that, like info to make is going to be ridiculous. It's going to be. But I hope they do something with it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, yeah. That, that, that's kind of what I've been doing. Uh, that, 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 you know, no, it's not over yet. Sorry, Bach. I check and just had a real sad face. Go ahead. <laughs> Still 30 <laughs> seconds left. Go uh, ahead, yeah, that, that's just what I've been doing. So oh. Maybe, oh. maybe they'll, they'll mod it and I, I can run around with lightsabers. Um, you mentioned the kitchen knife, and this made me remember, and it's not, it, it's tangentially, well, okay, no, it's not really news related, it's just a thing that's happening. Um, speaking of kitchen knives, we've been playing Dead by Daylight off and on. The new next killer for Dead by Daylight is Chucky from Child's Play, and I am so ready! I don't even know how he's supposed to work or anything, but I'm so ready, please let me murder somebody as Chucky. Oh, want it. I don't know when so, that comes uh, out. When it comes out, you're, you're going to be like, hey, let, let's play this now. Yes. Hey, guys, what are we doing this weekend? Well, you see this new killer came out, so get on Dead by Daylight. Uh, two days, by the way, so this podcast will be out when the autumn sale should be starting. I, I'm pretty sure it's the 21st, if we're oh, going around. Yeah. Good. Um, It'll be just in time, because then maybe the Phantom Liberty mm -hmm. DLC will be on sale, and I'll buy that, because then I can finish up Dragon's Dogma and start that. Yes, perfect, just in time for the holidays. <laughs> Nothing says happy holidays like cyberpunk. Yes, uh, one <laughs> one day, 20 hours, 57 minutes. November 21st, so yes, two days from now, the autumn sale will begin. Yeah, yeah. But, okay, we want to talk about actual news. Uh, I know Chucky coming to Dead by Daylight, not really news. Well, but it, it is, is for me. because they were teasing, and it's also going to be the first third person uh villain really so you're not gonna be first person all tiny nope you see chucky oh. from the backside and he has a spirit form which is charles lee ray yeah yes. okay uh, you, know you have to be in the child's form, play to get that so his his doll form is like his active ability um he could crawl underneath the pallet and whatnot and he's got a super Super mega long lunge too. Like that motherfucker like flies through the air to get you. Like full up child's play stuff. Like, <laughs> Chucky just, like is a small doll, room. but he does not skip leg day. That's how he can jump so far. That it's gonna be so much fun to watch watch his play uh, game. Make these spring loaded legs. We don't know how they built those dolls. I mean, to be fair, he's as strong as uh people. I mean he can like bench press people just about. Like throw people yeah. down at least. 
And he can strangle people, and that's got to take a lot of muscle, right? I mean, he's got tiny little doll hands, so he's got to have a lot of arm strength, right? <laughs> Shut up, Oak. Baby! Baby! <laughs> oh, my tiny little doll hands! Um, <laughs> little bitty doll hands! Little bitty doll hands, uh. get a choke a bitch! Okay, uh... <laughs> Oh my god. In relation to absolutely nothing, which part of the news do you want to start with? I can't make doll hands go into any of these stories, so, you know, go uh, for it. Pick one. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about a, another, this is another quick one, just for, uh, for <laughs> since we were talking about the uh, DLC coming out for, for that one, we'll talk about uh, another video game, uh, just... That happens to be going as well. Half Life is 25th anniversary update. Uh, it's got restored content, new maps, uh, and if you have Steam, it's currently free. To so keep. to keep, keep it. It is free. So buy it, and uh, if you or not buy it, but get it, and and you'll have a copy of it if you ever wanted to play it. Um, I did start it up the other day just to to see how it looked. It looks like a game from 25 years ago that's been updated. Um, <laughs> It's the only way I can say, uh, but it does have widescreen mode now, where uh, instead of four by three, um, so that's that's you know the UI has been scaled properly, that type of stuff. Um, so they've updated for for a modern build, and if you have a Steam Deck, it is uh, verified for a Steam Deck as well. Um, so maybe one of those games you just want to pick up and play while you're traveling, you know, type deal. Uh, they've also added the Half Link, uh, Half Life Uplink, which was it was <laughs> back in the day, kids. We used to have these thing called magazines, and when you had the magazines, you used to have these CDs that would have all these demos on them, and that was the CD exclusive for magazines. Um, was called uh, Half Link Uplink, and they've put it on there. It's just a mini campaign built just um, for that. So um, they thought able to put it in, and then. Um, so, and four new maps for the multiplayer part of it, for those that might be interested. I really got 25th anniversary. I am definitely old. I can tell you that now. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. A lot of things are making me feel old this week. Ollie posted something. What is it? Final Fantasy X? Final Fantasy X 2 came it's out 20, 20 years, years old. And it's Good like, God. stop. Stop it. I don't like <laughs> this. Oh, man. It's like, why? Why do you make me feel so old? I get that time moves forward. I just like to ignore how much time has moved forward. Thank you. Stop reminding me. Let it go. Let me live my life. Let me live my life. Oh, man. Or, you know, in this case, let me live my half-life, I guess. Ah, oh, wow. I went for it. I saw wow, it in there. You definitely I went, went for, for it. it. Wow. I can't believe you did it. Moving on. Let's ignore that. Time has moved on from that. Uh, I guess Nintendo, because the other two are for Embracer. That's on okay. here. Um, there is a former employee that has come out from Nintendo who worked there from 2019 to 2023. Um, and basically, and I don't think this is much of a shock for anybody, but it's kind of cool to hear from someone uh, who seems to be super talented because he has a YouTube channel that he's currently doing CG um, designs for. Um, that he's basically like Nintendo's a great company, but it is basically a haven for geniuses and not regular people. So <laughs> it's like if you're just an average person, um, you're probably not going to have fun working there. And he's, he's like, I was an average person. Okay, some of the comments that I have to say for that is that guy ha definitely has imposter sy in syndrome because you don't just get to be an average guy working at Nintendo. Like you are extraordinary upper level of developers to get a job at Nintendo. You know their vetting process has mm -hmm. to be crucial and brutal to get mm -hmm. a job there. Like you have to be the upper echelon of of talent I, I would agree with there. that i would agree with that but I, I mean i guess it's like you get there for four years and you leave on your own merits 
that means you were good enough for them to just keep you there. Like they were happy with you. But but I'm wondering if his part of his thought process is too. There are people that are very good at what they do, mm -hmm. but don't like the pressure that comes along with with having a job like that. Where there are people that are very good at what they do and love the pressure and push more pressure towards people on that. And Which maybe probably, that's what, yeah. He's he's, kind he's of that probably style. yeah he's probably more of a laid back dude that just really good at what he does. Yeah. A hundred percent. Like much respect for working with Nintendo or working for them for that long. Like mm -hmm. you are definitely not an average guy. Like you are incredible at what you do to work with them. Like you got to give yourself a little credit. I mean, getting to put that on your resume is not something a lot of people get to do. Well, I mean, you worked there four years and then you left, you didn't get fired. Exactly. Yeah. And your own volition, which means they, you could have stayed there. So, mm -hmm definitely not an average guy like definitely uh, i mean it's all it's good to uh, like some of the stuff he says i'm i'm you know a haven for superhumans and geniuses is basically what he said but um i think it's and i think that's where the pressure thing comes in superhuman part yeah is gonna be more oh, yeah like um, I, I bet they expect a lot out of you like their baseline expectations are way above like other studios not like microsoft i'm sure microsoft has those kind of expectations and sony and things like that uh, i wouldn't expect somebody like ea or whatnot to have those like their their expectations are get the game out make me money don't give a fuck what the product is just make me money and nintendo's like get our game out make us money but make it a damn good game it better be up to our expectations we don't release bad games well but it's, when you have people that are that are driving your driving force your your people that are going to be the leads on each one of the games too are people that don't have a problem being there for you know 15 16 hours a day trying to get the stuff done and have been doing it in some of their cases for 40 years you know like it's you're it, it that's where i think you're going to have a new class of of worker that comes in that aren't ready for that because that's not where they started from. They're not used to doing that. And so it is going to take somebody special to get into the being able to, to, to uh, Nintendo and stay there. Um, but he does, he said they're all wonderful people. Like he did, he, he raved about them. So it wasn't like he said, yeah, there was no hard here. feelings or anything. Like he, no. he was very, very straightforward about that. He's like, I'm not complaining at all. I loved my time there. They were absolutely incredible, but holy shit it's a lot of stress yeah so that's that does not surprise the rest of us knowing nintendo and you know as consumers we can see where nintendo puts their expectations i mean metroid 4 wasn't where nintendo wanted it so they shut the whole project down and restarted it mm -hmm. so yeah they put pressure on you and if it doesn't live up they're not afraid to just cancel it and start over but you know and I I love the fact that Nintendo is that way. Um, like, let's take the the fact that they're an exclusive to their own product, right? Mm -hmm. Just when it comes to the video game side of it, I wish more companies would go. We're not going to release fifty games this year. We're going to release five really fucking good games mm -hmm. this year, and we're going to make a ton of money with it. Like, look at Ubisoft, EA, Activision just how they saturated markets um uh, activision made it to where they only had one market and that was cod um it's true. you know it's true you know and then that that company originally started up it, like activision's old um old games they originally started off as a producer for a third party um for atari they were actually atari employees that ended up creating activision originally um and and actually got sued by atari and the reason that we have third party games now is because of Activision originally. So like knowing that history that's there and the fact that it's down to one game and but they're releasing every single year we're getting the same game with a new skin. And, with a new skin basically, you know. And the last the Modern Warfare 3 is the worst rated mod COD game ever right now with a metacritic score of like 56. Why? And did what did they change about it that people don't like? Uh, it's now an open world campaign that's about four hours long. Oh. They said it's like playing uh, Warzone, the, their their BR, mm -hmm. in campaign form. 
Isn't Warzone free? Yeah, but but Modern Warfare Three is not. That's yeah, what I'm saying. That's, like, okay, that that's what I was asking. I was just making sure. Obviously, yes. you know, I keep up with COD so well. Yeah, um, no, they they just it's like evidently because I liked the Modern Warfare remake that they did. Um, it was okay. I didn't play the second one. Um, evidently, the second one was okay. Um, and led up pretty well to this one, and then this one was uh, four to five hours is what most of my friends that have played the game said that's how long it takes to play it. Hmm. Um, where I thought the eight-hour ones that we had were short. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. We're, weren't we upset about eight-hour games? No? <laughs> yeah, we were at four. Um, it's still full price, right? It's, it's a $60, 70 oh, yeah. Dollar game. Yeah, okay, just checking. Same, same price, still the same amount of biker transactions inside their uh, multiplayer part. Of course it is. Um, and you have to, like, for those that didn't want to buy it, to play Warzone, I think you still have to have, like, the Modern Warfare 3 download thing to it because they have, they're combining all the games together. It's, like, really weird, um, which is why it's, like, you know, massive Ooh. now. Mostly yeah. negative on Steam. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, a lot of people are extremely unhappy about it. Yeah. All so I think it had mixed, a, most recent, mostly negative. Yeah, I think they had a, on the Metacritic, the user score at one point was like 1.6 or something. <laughs> I don't know what that one's supposed to be out of. Maybe 10. I don't know. Um, but yeah. So. Matchmaking is the worst. Terrible service. Uh, needs new launchers. I don't know what the launcher is like. Is it not just the, bl well, I guess maybe it's not the Blizzard launcher anymore. I don't know. It's a battle net, it's battle is net it, right? Yeah, is, isn't it? I don't know. No, no, no. It's not battle net anymore. Oh, it's called the Blizzard File Switcher. Ooh. Like, I'm hovering over it and it says Ooh. Blizzard File Switcher. No. I mean, I hover over Steam and it says Steam. I hover over the Xbox app and it says Xbox Beta. Still in beta. Yeah, I don't understand that. I get an update every other day on it. The best feature is Alt F4. <laughs> 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 Oof. Wow, that's a review. Yep. Yep. That is a review right there. Wow. <laughs> Best features Alt F4. Jeez. Wait. Couldn't imagine. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, well, that's that's fun. And it is Yep. Wait, that's a season pass. The season pass is 60 70 bucks. Oh wait. I don't know. I don't know how they've got this lined out. This is weird. I think if you pay seventy bucks, you get the season pass with it, maybe, and sixty bucks um, is the main game. Ninety nine ninety nine is the vault edition, which I think is everything. Uh, I don't know. There you it go. Just tell pay a hundred dollars in a shit game. That's all you got to do. Yeah. There you go. Dollars in a shit that. game. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm. That's that's informative. Okay. So from right now, since Microsoft bought it. <laughs> <laughs> right before this game came out theoretically it microsoft can only say that they improve the product <laughs> i mean assuming my, my i mean if the product was, gets 60s next year instead of 50s if i'm on microsoft the store, and it the game came out at that and it's it's obviously like the series is tanking i'd be like let's shove this for a year or two and then come back to it when people miss it so i i, I agree with that i think I, I would be interested to see. They're still going to have to come out with something that's COD related because they'll still have Warzone that's there, but they don't have to come out with a main COD game. They could just be like, okay, we're going to release more maps for the last COD that came out or some shit like that. We're going to release older maps that y'all liked, but we're going to put it with this or whatever. Mm. But I mean, I the feel problem like at I'm this point, there's literally nothing you could do that would please that franchise base. Like, we're going to give you maps that you liked for a different game. Or that's not good enough because we wanted a new game. Or we're going to give you a new game. We don't want this. It's garbage. Give us maps. We're not going to give you anything so that you have time to miss it. Where's my game? Like, there's literally well, you, no way you're going to please this specific fan base. I, I, no, I don't why disagree. You, got, you can't try to hit a specific one. Just just make a good game and the people will come to you. Well, Except but trying I, to appease everybody. But, well, but, I just, but, but here's the thing with COD. COD players want something that's very specific. And and they proved that because when they came out with the the COD in space, whatever the hell that one was, 
Um, you know, I don't even, everybody I don't even remember about. which one that one, like what the name of that one was. I, I don't want to, I want to say the advanced war fighter was the one before it. And then this one was something different. I can't remember, but anyway, because advanced, I think was the one that had F for respect on the, the, that became the meme, but yeah, advanced warfare. Yeah. That one's the one with uh, Troy Baker and Kevin Spacey. And yeah. that one was a good game. Like that it was, was good, it was a really sure. good game. Um, and then, but I think that they tried to change how the game worked. They gave them backpacks that had like, you know, jetpacks on them and they changed it to where you had different loadouts that you could do and all that. And people threw a damn fit about it. I want to go back and play that game because I never played it because it's probably on sale like a motherfucker right now. But I want to go back and play it just to see if it's oh. actually a good game. But it because it was COD, people threw a damn fit about it because they didn't want anything to do with the space part of it. Um, I mean, it's it's supposed to be the realistic military shooter, though. I'll, I'm not I'm not sure that it really is all of that realistic, but whatever. I mean, if I can take 20 bullets and then just hide behind something and then I come back to life completely and completely healed, very realistic, obviously. Or if you die and come back at all. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, that hardcore... Life has hardcore more mode built in. Yes. Oh, shit. God does not. Uh, uh. <laughs> Maybe it'll be on the... I don't even know if it's on Steam. Maybe it'll be on the Steam sale. You can play it that way. <laughs> no, I'll have to find it. I'll have to see if I can find it. I just got to find out what the name of the damn thing was. Just Google Cod in space, and I'm sure you'll find it through all of the angry reviews. <laughs> that's a good good call. I wonder if let's let's find out. Cod in, in space. space. In space. Oh, yeah, the pigs in space is all I Call of Duty in space. Uh, it's a new game. It's a new game? No, it's not. Infinite Warfare. Uh, Infinite there you Warfare. go. We should have remembered it. It's got our name in it. <laughs> <laughs> no, fair. we try to forget games like that. Uh, I guess that's true. Okay, fine. Ugh. Well, do you want to talk about the other two pieces of news while Oak furiously adds it to his wish list? <laughs> furiously adds, clicks, adds to wish list. I don't want to spend click, money click. on this, but I want to try it. <laughs> oh, I click, 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 click. Uh, um, so we knew that there is, uh, that there were layoffs for Embracer Group, um, but they have confirmed that there are 900 empl employees that have been laid off, uh, in the previous in financial quarter, quarter, which is yes. only through, it's like July through September, I think. So there's actually more, but this is only for that. So it's the article is quite interesting on how this is reads out too, because if you read down at the bottom, uh, it's like this, uh, is it this part? Da, 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 da. It's right here. Revenue from PC and console sales dropped by 7%, which the company attributes to uh, strong to strong sales of Saints Row last year. I huh? I assume, and, and I saw this in a comment, um, but I, I guess I agree with them based on the wording. I assume that means that people did not buy Saints Row until it was on sale. So oh. it dropped because people weren't buying it at launch at full price. They bought it after launch at a discount. Could um, it be also people... the fact that it was exclusive to the Epic Store? No, clearly <laughs> Epic Store exclusivity had nothing to do with poor sales. It never does in all of the exclusive titles <laughs> that have been on there. You know, I would love <coughs> to actually see uh, numbers, like the, the actual numbers behind it. Like how much did Epic give you? And how much did you make from their sales alone versus mm -hmm. how much did you make from Steam right out of the gate? Because if you would have sold it on Steam, more people would have bought it right out of the gate before uh, Epic Game. you selling it on Epic Games and bad word going around. Mm -hmm. You could have repaired it on Steam and created a, a better community and added uh, mods and things like that to let people you know, make the game a little bit more wild than it originally was, which is what they wanted, which you could have appeased your audience and sold the game more. But I, you put it I on feel... Epic, locked it in, bad words got around, it came to Steam, some people picked it up, it and it, your Steam community's already dead. It came to Steam and launched on sale. I got it at, at a discount, I think it was like 35-40% off when it hit Steam, so like day one it was on sale for me. Well, and all the bad reviews had already got out, which is crazy, because... If if it had hit Steam first, like 
Chicken was just talking about, you would have that community base that was there. Mm -hmm. But you also have the review base that's there, so the reviews would have been poor to start with. Yeah, I mean, but it I tells think they you whether mixed. they're recent or not. Yeah. You know, it tells you, you know, mostly positive, whatever, right? Like you were reading off a minute ago with another one. So, like, the... I, I'm wondering if part of the reason they chose Epic was because there's no review system. I think it's more Epic pays for exclusivity, most likely, and that yeah. that might just be some of that icing thing. But if it ever got out that people, developers are releasing on Epic specifically to avoid the review system... One, that's going to look real bad for you as a developer. Like, real oh, yeah. bad, because it means you know your game's bad. And two, just because the storefront you're selling it on doesn't have reviews doesn't mean that there aren't reviews available. It just means there aren't direct customer reviews right there. It means you have right. to go to sites like the, the Metacritic sites and things like that to read customer reviews. Yeah, and that, that I have to, like, hard disagree, because they released uh, uh, Remnant 2, Remnant, uh, Remnant 2 on Steam originally, too, and that game just blew up. Like that's yeah, another one. That's a game. Like that game is Steam super fucking yeah. Mm -hmm. Like that, that game is mm -hmm. super fucking good. Yeah, but that's a different developer. It. Remember the developers inside the Embracer group. Yeah, they get yeah. to make their own decisions. It just right, and I will say that they made the wrong decision going yes. with Epic. Well, obviously they don't exist anymore. <laughs> <laughs> don't go with Epic. Gearbox. Period. Stop going with Epic. I can't stress enough. It also mentioned that Payday Three got mixed reviews and reception, but that one also was a a multi platform launch it was not an exclusive i'm pretty, it, I'm pretty sure it's just it's just buggy all right unfortunately watching so many games release on steam it takes extraordinarily high effort to get a game reviewed into the negatives like you have to actually do something bad to the community to make your game negative otherwise most of the time, if it's not a good game, it will usually end up being mixed. But if you release a mixed version of the game and piss off the community by doing something shitty, they will negative your game. Yeah. Like most negative games, like you have to like compound your issues because the Steam community is pretty good about being like, yeah, this is the good parts of the game. And this is the bad parts of the game. Well, I mean, I'm if your kinda, game is legitimately... Eh, crappy then it's like it's gonna it needs, get again it needs to be compounded like you need to have an asset flip and you have to stop talking to the community and not fixing your problems like you have to like pry Payday to make your game is negative sitting at, uh recent as mostly negative and all-time mixed yeah all time will usually be mixed unless you just hard bomb your game and if they just completely abandon and stop doing anything then it'll it'll keep going down to negative. But if they keep working on it and they actually improve it, like listening to their community, the game will come back to being mixed. I feel but, like with Payday 3's case, it's one of one of those cases that they needed to release the game to get the money to continue to work on the game. I mean, I that's understandable. Having, I can having, see that. Having played the game, and I think that that's part of the deal too with them being on... Is it early game access game. or is it... No, it's a full release. No, it's full release. Should, should, should have done early access. People are so much more forgiving with early access. Don't disagree. Like, Don't disagree. <sighs> like, oh. Definitely. If you're that scared and you need some extra in, uh, influx, early access. Just be like, uh, we're putting this out here. We're going to work on it for a few years. We just want to give the community a chance to, to, to work the game with us. So... Um, here you go. Early access. Yeah. Yeah, I I played it on because it's on Game Pass, but pay it, um, and I paid it. I played it on it with no pants, and after it took him a long time to get Payday Two up to where it is now, but it feels honed in, where I feel like Payday Three is where Payday Two used to be. <laughs> And it's just like Payday 2 with better graphics, basically. But no, there's just some elements to it that I wish that they would have, have done better, for sure. Uh, and I will say, like, Embracer Group having all of these problems was a uh, a poor business decision from the upper management mm -hmm. because they started spending that billion dollars that, that they were going to get from uh, their investors that pulled out after a while and now they're they're starting to eat it like they yeah. are 
struggling. Mm. They're trying to they restabilize. They put the cart before the horse for real. Yeah, they did, and it's it's hurting, and it, it hurts me. But this this was a bad decision on their part. I appreciate what they do and how they do it, but from a business decision, this was a poor decision from them. Well, and it's, and the thing is, I wish poor... them the best to be able to uh, fix it and right the ship so to say it was a poor higher up decision that is now affecting so many people so mm -hmm. many because i mean 900 employees and it's just for last quarter they've already yep. had layoffs for this quarter and they'll probably have more oh, yeah. i mean they just they should not have done that you never start making business moves until the deal is in place and 100 they failed super hard at business 101 for that Yep. Yeah. I mean, we've seen until that contract uh, signed, do not spend that money. Yeah. yeah. You, you might want to wait for the ink to start uh, drying before. <laughs> I think. I think the worst. Like, I'm. I'm kind of glad that Tolkien's family finally sold his franchise, but at the same time, it's one of those where it's like that would have saved them completely. Just don't buy Tolkien's stuff, because that deal alone was in the billions. Yeah. So it's like, don't do not do that, and you're fine. The video game part of it would have been fine. And that's what people know you for. You know, I know you've got other investments, but... I mean, at this point, they have to start finding out how to license their stuff out so that they can start, like, bringing some money back in yeah. uh, by letting uh, licensing out whatever stuff that they own. They own a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, but now uh, they're just going to start, you know, shipping off developers to the graveyard. <laughs> If they're smart, they'll start uh, kind of doing what the other companies do and start leasing out their their IPs to indie indie studios and letting indie studios take a hit of these big named uh, IPs and whatnot, just to see what you could do. Because come on, I mean, do do an indie indie studio for Lord of the Rings? What what I mean, what could they do? We've had good Lord of the Ring games, bad Lord of the Ring games. Why not? Look look at uh, Larian. They had Divinity Original Sin. Or they had the first Divinity, then Original Sin, Kickstartered, then Original Sin 2, Kickstarter again, and then they got a huge influx of cash and given the rights to Boulder's Gate 3 and just blew up. So now they're, they're AAA. They're huge, massive. So go ahead. Give give somebody else a try at something random you've got. Yeah. If it blows up, cool. Good. Good for you. The studio's made a name for itself. You've made a name connecting with that studio, and now you can, you know, continue going forward let but. it sit for a couple of years and then sell off the saints Row ip <laughs> or license <laughs> it out if you don't want to sell it yeah i would say license it out to somebody but i don't know where where you're gonna go with that i but see that's where i think i i think that like buying up the the different studios is is the equivalent to the snake eating itself right mm -hmm. over time 100%. everybody every because think of how many studios there used to be mm -hmm. and then ea bought up a bunch of them activision's bought up a bunch of them microsoft bought up sony's bought up a bunch of them so now we're down to what five the ubisoft we've bought up what five six publishers is all we really big publishers that we're on and now embracer group as well so you've got those eventually um, and Activision's now been bought by Microsoft, so that's just well, one that's, more part of... This is kind of the part part of the case that the, uh, the a lot of the complainants were making against Microsoft buying Activision mm -hmm. to start with, is you're cutting down on how many of these individual things you have and, and making market share more your favor because you have all of them. And I don't, I don't think that it's a problem for them to buy companies and things like that but i do think that you're not wrong with how that is limiting in a lot of ways where it is starting to hurt itself at this point I, I, but i but i think the difference we're dealing with with microsoft versus embracer group is microsoft has got the money to buy what they're trying to buy versus trying to depend on somebody else to donate the money to well, them essentially invest the money true. into them you know, if Embracer think, Group is smart, they'll they'll try to shake hands with Microsoft and see what they can do. Yeah, I like, mean, all you got to do is say you want to buy an exclusivity on one of these, like a timed yeah. exclusivity. Yeah. Do exactly what Sony was doing, right? Hundred uh, percent. Like you, you know, there are options for Embracer Group to like come back from this. But damn, bro, you burned a lot of bridges. I hope you have enough construction crew left to build some of them back. Well, because like one of the other things that we have on here is same, part of the same group is you've got Knights of the Old Republic remake, 
that we've had an announcement for. Uh, Sony had the the rights to the announcement. I'm assuming it's supposed to take place PS5 and PC is what it said. So that means it's going to be a timed exclusive before it ever hit an Xbox. Um, so, you know, my question is, you know, if you're willing to do that with Knights of the Old Republic, why would you not willing to do that with other items to be able to kind of license your stuff out that way? Um, you know, it make a lot more sense to do, which, you know, um, the Embracer Group, the Embracer Group boss actually refuses to comment on the remake because It'll it does not matter. Sense. Yeah, what you say because it's going to make headlines, and that made a headline that mm -hmm. he said. I mean, it kind of makes the point in itself too. It's kind of funny. It's like I'm not going to say anything because it's going to make a headline. Well, fine, I'll just make a headline of you not saying anything. Yeah, my point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's irony, yeah. but I just. <laughs> It's yeah, Embrace is getting in dangerous territory, and I guess we'll have to wait and see where they stabilize out to, or if they stabilize, because it could be that this is like you know, the Jenga blocks are getting too shaky, things are happening, and the next one that you know goes is gonna make the tower fall. So we'll see. True. Makes me sad though. That's a lot of studios that. Now have people are having to scramble to find new jobs and stuff because they were so eager to spend money they didn't actually have yet. Yeah, the hey, sad part the, about the it thing is that I could say about it is that all of these people looking for jobs, there are plenty of indie studios out there. Go get, go find you one. There's so much room out there for people these days. A lot, a lot of people start hiring in the first year. This is we go through this every year where there's layoffs. I think the part that's frustrating with Embracer Group is because of the fact they spent money they didn't have. Yep. Yeah, hundred um, percent. You know, it's a you know, and it's like Epic had some layoffs and stuff. They had the money there, but again, they were giving free shit away and hoping that their their store would do well. But they had to lay people off because, you know, of that. You had Bungie that laid off their community, um, their the, the people that were in charge of their community um, that were corresponding with them and they're up for community of the year for the freaking game awards yeah, it's so support. Weird. you know it's like come on man like speaking of which you know, the game awards are voting is still open if you would like to go and and do so you know see all of the nominees we'll we'll cover all of it probably once the game awards happen i don't even know what day the game awards are supposed to be so i don't know what like Seven? in relation when our next show is december 7th i want to say uh we will not have a show after that, but we might can make something happen. Yeah, December 7th, it says. Wait, wait is the, the Game Awards is December 7th? Yeah. Yes. That mean we're off next I mean, week on the 3rd, off the 10th, so we would miss it. I was going to say we could skip the 3rd just go straight to the 7th. Or to the 10th. To the 10th. That's what I mean. Yeah, I mean. Well, that means we the, the 10th would be our last show for the year because then it would be the the 17th and then the 24th and 31st. So unless something major happens after the game awards, that might be our last show for the year. Well, we can also do two shows back to back the 10 and 17, 10 well, is for the game awards if, and then 17 if is the last show. There's nothing that happened after that. There's no point though, is what I'm saying. Yeah. So, yeah, which is, fine. I mean, I'm, I'm fine with that. I'm not arguing is that look at it. Look at this guys. You as the audience get to be part of our business decisions for the show. <laughs> I was about to say, <laughs> I was about to say we could, uh... isn't that fun? Uh, they think it probably is the end of the day <sighs> we'll talk more about it we're actually this is, time. this is a nice business meeting we're not even yelling at each other that's crazy okay this let's time. be real we know who does the yelling <laughs> around here okay and it's not any of you guys <laughs> uh, i was gonna point my finger at oak but yeah no, it was definitely so, look, that's not yelling that's just sacrificing you in games baka you do the same thing let's be real uh uh, <laughs> the, the only way to ensure my, my survival is to sacrifice. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, I don't, I don't entirely disagree with you. It seems like if he dies, you live in game. So maybe that That's is how fair. it works. That is, it fair. is. Somebody must yeah. must be sacrificed per round. <laughs> and uh, I always nominate Oak. <laughs> Rude. Every time. Rude. Every time, sir. Look, he likes consistency. I will bring the ghost to you. Do what now? 
I, I will bring the ghost to you. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. Oh man. Uh, our our game of ghost ghost hunting we did the other night. So I know this is at the end of the show, but you mentioned that, and I just got to tell the story really quickly. I know we're trying to get out of here. We played Phasmophobia last night with me and Cat and Red and Chicken, and we tried to do the challenge mode. And we loaded it up one time. The challenge is, the ghost is slow but angry. And you start with no sanity and you can't replace your sanity. And it gives you, since it's the challenge mode, it gives you all of the starter items. So it's all the baby stuff. There was one map that we loaded into. We played on the same map. It was the same. It's all, it was on Camp Woodwind. You had to do the challenge mode on that. The first one we couldn't figure it out. People died slowly one by one until we, to, I think Cat was the only one left or something. And she was like, I'll just guess and leave. We came back. I walked in with my little EVP thing that I always, like, I just always walk in and immediately I'm like, where are you? How old are you? Are you angry? I walked in. I get to like the little cooking tent on Camp Woodwind and I'm like, where are you? The ghost hunts and it spawned on top of me and killed me immediately. Right after that, Red walked over to where I was at and was looking around in that area. The ghost hunted, up, spawned on him, immediately killed him right next to me. And then like two <laughs> seconds later, Chicken was walking over there. The, the ghost spawned and murdered him. It was like, oh, okay, I guess we won't play this round then fine <laughs> it was a bitch yes it was funny though a That's, chicken, i guess why it's called challenge mode at the end of the chicken day. murdered me twice last night i tried to kill you the, the second the first time but you didn't fall for it well i died anyway and then the next That's time fine. chicken's like it's right in front of you turn around it's turn around cat was already dead and the dead players can see other dead players chicken was looking at cat and then I turned around listening to his instruction, which turned me right into the ghost. <laughs> yep. The perfect. salt level was so high. So perfect. So high. So perfect. <sighs> you salty? Weird. Yeah, she was angry. I was. We actually, we <laughs> were like, we all got upset because they just, we couldn't do anything on any of, we tried it three times, I think, three or four times. And yeah. then we were like, fuck it. Let's. I'm signing off of this, and I'm loading up plate up. We're gonna go make a restaurant. Let's go. We, I mean, we stopped playing after the three of us died in the same fucking spot. Like yeah. after that, it was just like we're we're not doing it. I mean, as soon as we walked in, Red died immediately. He we found the ghost. Red dies immediately. <laughs> then Griff goes over to it, or I go over to investigate, and I die immediately. And then Griff goes to investigate, and she dies immediately. Like this motherfucker was like, "All right, cool. You're just gonna keep walking it over did, here." I mean, the description of the challenge right here. was that the ghost was angry. It lived up to the description. It just did not give us a chance to, you know, <laughs> do anything about it. Well, it, it said it was slow, so that means it just had moved from that spot by the time he got over there. It's because not. it started the hunt exactly on us, which was absolute BS. <laughs> I didn't even know it was hunting either. Like, it, I didn't even know it was hunting either. Like it just, yeah, I just I, died. I went, where are you? And I hear the sound when you get murdered of the knee and then the hands came. And I was like, seriously? I didn't even, I, mean, <laughs> I didn't even get a chance for my flashlight to blink or anything. It did. I, I was so mad. I was so mad. I was like, are you fucking serious? You're going to kill me dead up like that? Uh... <laughs> Uh, we do appreciate everybody who hangs out with us each and every week. Well, each and every other week. One day I'll get it right. And if it respawn, uh, make sure that you hit the sub button at below as well as the little bell. So that way you get the notification uh, when we've sent out a new video. Uh, also, make sure you go to twitch.tv forward slash elite chicken 313. Chicken, what you playing right now? Anything? Anything? Nothing yet, but it looks like I might be getting more free time here in the very near future. So hopefully, not this I will... week because it's Thanksgiving yet, week. It's not but this the week, week after that, possibly. Possibly a little, like a little, a little something. So I might be able to finally get into Resident Evil 4 DLC. I've got it. It's waiting. I've just been waiting for a few, ex like a few string of days, so that I can sit down and play it instead of playing it for a day, waiting a week, playing it for a day, waiting a week. I want to sit down and play it. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, make sure you go to twitch.tv as well as kick.com. You can see me at MDB Oak Tree there. Um, and uh, every Sunday, I'm pretty much playing Valheim, but uh, throughout the week, I'll pick up some things every once in a while. You know, uh, I do have a guest at my house this weekend, so we will uh, see if I get any video games in or not, but should, hopefully. And well, this coming weekend, I guess, not th today. <laughs> I do not have guests today. Uh, but anyway, frame and respawn. I'm Oak Tree. I'm Griff. I'm Chicken. I'm Bucket. 
Bye. See you. Bye.